So if I think back to the beginning of the pandemic and the first few months and even the first year of working in the pandemic, it was really an experience unlike anything else for, for most clinicians who are in the intensive care unit on acute care services. You know, here in Seattle was the first case of COVID in the country. Um, and I remember being on a phone call with 200 other doctors in Washington state who were trying to figure out what to do. And what they were talking about was seeing patient after patient come into the emergency room and gasping for breath and dying in front of them immediately. They talked about feeling so worried about whether or not they would transmit it to their family, that they would undress in the garage and sleep in the garage. Um, I heard about doctors who were trying to flag down Ubers to go home at the end of really long days um, wearing scrubs and realizing that the Ubers were not going to pick them up because they were wearing scrubs. Um, and so there were a whole bunch of really like existential confrontations with death and dying at a rate and an intensity that I don't think any of them had seen before. There were people at that time of the pandemic who had come into the emergency room look, saying, I'm having a little trouble breathing, and they'd be dead in two hours, right? I mean, it was this dramatic thing where people uh, were just crashing and burning all over the place. And, you know, unless you worked in a, a, in a disaster situation, you just haven't seen that many people that sick so quickly. And I think compounding that was the, the fact that um, nobody knew how to best treat COVID pneumonia. Um, and there was a lot of uncertainty and self-guessing um, and self-criticism about that because, you know, it's normal when someone dies for a doctor or nurse to go, well, what should I have done differently? And when you have that over and over and over and over and you can't get out of this loop of I should have done something differently something must be wrong with me um, that really takes a toll over time the study totally validated my hypothesis that psilocybin therapy is really dramatically different than regular just counseling and that there is a unique value to this kind of therapy the 15 people who got placebo, um, some of them got a little bit better. You know, their depression scores dropped a little bit on average, but their depression scores did not drop anything like the amount that the scores dropped in the psilocybin group. The people who were in the psilocybin group had much larger drops that were quicker and they were more durable than the people in the placebo group. Um, and the reason is, is that I think psilocybin gave them the opportunity to really see their own feelings and see their own situation um, in a way that they could have more compassion for themselves and more understanding about what had really happened. And it turns out that if you look at everybody in the study, about 70% of them made a major job shift. They either left their job, found a new job, changed how they were spending their time at work in a very significant way. Um, and so that's a huge percentage of people, right? I do think it, you have to bear in mind that these were people who were coming in feeling a little desperate and knowing that something was wrong and not, during, not being sure what to do about it. And I think one of the things that they got from this was real clarity about what direction they wanted to move in next.